What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the West Coast Graffiti Show. Let's get it. Everybody, what up, what up, what up? Telly Savalas, Enrique Ledesma, Pelon, and Joker. Thank you for tapping into the West Coast Graffiti Show. That looks pretty weird. Let me go ahead and put this down here real quick. There you go. There you go, everybody. All right, so we're back in business. We're back in business. Hope you guys had a great weekend. <laughs> hope you guys had a great weekend. The reason why I say we have, uh, hopefully you had a great weekend is because the weekend was full of uh, so many things. Street Post Podcast in the building. There's so many things that happened over the weekend. So many things that happened over the weekend. Unfortunately, I put, <laughs> if you guys are part of the West Coast Maniacs, I put a little community post, right? I put a, wow, we have two Telly Savalas. Well, there's one Telly Savalas and there's one Telly Salavas. <laughs> well, anyways, um, I put a community post on my page and um, I said, I, I put, hey, do you guys want me to react to the Tony A versus uh, Frost situation that happened over the weekend, yesterday to be exact? And I want to say like nine of you guys. I don't know how many. Let me see. Let me see. It, was, it wasn't too many people that actually uh, replied to that. But but that's not to say that. Uh, okay. So here it is. We had 19 people comment. 19 people comment on that post. The thing is, um, sometimes we do have to listen to our audience, right? Sometimes we have to listen to the audience. And the audience said, Chales, Chalucas, don't do it. Don't do it, West Coast. And you know what? Hey, sounds about right, homie. Sounds about right. I might, I might, uh, I don't know. It, it, it was a crazy situation, to say the least. Crazy situation. It all started, I think, at Haters World, right? But we'll get into that later on. We will get into that later on. Um, Joe Bob says, Mega Man sends his regards. This is what Mega Man says. I'll be back, homie. I'll be back all the time. <laughs> nah, shout out to Mega Man. Shout out to Mega Man. He's doing his thing out there in the in the um, what is it, the podcasting world. So, shout out to Mega Man. He's doing his thing, man. Okay, so I also remember last week uh, somebody said, "Oh, did you hear about Lush and um, I think it's Almighty Suspect Almighty." They got down, right? So let's see, man. How was work? My my hey, work was really cool, man. You know, um, it was a little busy. We had a couple of call offs. We had a couple of call offs. So um, you know, sometimes I don't know how you guys I don't know what you guys do, but sometimes when you have a call off, what happens is for the most part, you have to actually end up doing two jobs, right? I, for the most part. For the most part. I don't know. Every job is different. So I ended up actually doing two areas, as they call them, two areas. But it was cool, man. It made the day go by quick, man. So anyway, so Lush and um, Almighty Suspect, 
got down, putazos, run the fade, <laughs> right? So here's what Lush had to say. That thing with Almighty. Yeah, I use the motherfucking mouth guard. You feel me to protect my motherfucking teeth and shit. You feel me? I got cracks, but you feel me? Rolled over there, Dolo. Did my shit. You see? Ain't nobody playing. You see me though? I'm cool. Ten toes handle business. He did his thing. You feel me? He did his thing. I went over there, Dolo. Handle business. Shasta, you feel me? All right, so, <clears throat> like, uh, you know, a lot of people say this, that, and, and, you know, shout out to uh, Roll Call State to State. If you guys haven't tapped in with Roll Call State to State, State to State, go tap in. He was actually, he was actually on, on um, how can I say, he was on a rant. Roll Call State to State was on a rant right now. I tapped in, as I always do. I try to tap in with everybody, right? So, anyways, he was talking about, Chicanos can't get along, man. We can't get along. We're always our own fucking enemies, right? Nobody's going to run the fade. Everybody says, roll up, pull up, do this, that, and the other. Well, hey, here is proof, man, that Lush actually pulled up solo dolo and ran the fade with Suspect Almighty. Hey, bro, for making sure that wasn't no pack outs, wasn't no funny shit because I was over there slid to the... You feel me to the trenches in South Central Solo Dolo. You feel me? Dolo and I handle my can nobody tell me shit. Can nobody tell me shit? That's man shit. While I'm in the midst of doing things like providing for my family and, I, and and taking care of me, me and mines. What the fuck I got going on? You feel me? Like this ain't nothing special, there's nothing to glorify. But you feel me? Like this is what happens every single day. Regardless of where you from. Motherfuckers stay getting down. You feel me? And that right there should be a testimony to the masses. Lush, this is a testimony to the masses. You actually did what a lot of people will not do. And look, somebody said this perfectly, right? He said, Joe Bob said, damn, Lush and Almighty actually got down. Nobody in the YouTube yarda has ever got down. Those are facts. It's nothing, not, it's nothing, but y'all, y'all see me? You feel me? Like, I'm straight. Yeah, I kind of, his last, his last, he, yeah, he knocked me down, fool. I ain't gonna lie. Down a few times. I me down like four times. I got me get back up and we ran that shit. I got my licks off, you feel me? He definitely did his shit. He definitely did his shit. You feel me? I got, got off. I did my thing. I, I, I drove all right, so that's the thing right there. I'm not going to play it. It's like a 10-minute video. So that I have to congratulate him. I think this is the button. There you go. I have to congratulate um, Lush. We have to congratulate Lush for doing what he did. You know what I mean? When you talk your shit, when you're talking about this, that, and the other, and you don't pull up, that's when we all say, you know what, this is for the internet. This is all fun and games until somebody gets hurt, right? And nobody got hurt, unfortunately. Not, not I'm, I'm sorry, not unfortunately. Fortunately, it's fortunately nobody got hurt, right? Shout out to Lush, man. Shout out to Lush for doing his thing, right? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Norby's, Norby's the um the the Crip Mac and AD fight was fake. They already admitted it. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna put that out there, but they already admitted. it. Uh, people were saying that uh, oh, it was fake. I even my me myself, I said it was fake, and and not to, it turns out it's true. It was fake, you know. But anyway, so what I'm trying to get at is that you know, Lush and I think it's uh, Almighty Suspect or Suspect Almighty. I don't know which how it goes. They got down. They squashed their beef. They're moving forward, and that's what it should be, right? Because if you're talking about somebody, right, and then that 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 uh, that somebody is like, hey, come on, pull up. I'll give you an addy pull up a lot of the times what do we do man we think twice right we think twice we're like okay if i go over there who's gonna be there is it just gonna be that person or is it gonna be two people am i gonna take somebody with me just in case or am i gonna go solo dolo like he said i don't know that's the scary part right because not everybody is old school right not everybody's gonna be like you know what 
I run my own page. I don't need nobody to back me up. I don't need nobody. There's a lot of things that we have to think about and be very cautious of doing because when we do approach somebody, let's just say that person might not be fair. Let's just say that person might not be fair, right? Thunder Loco says, any man over 21 fighting on Fighting on purpose, meaning not defending himself, is spectrum for sure. <laughs> Wait, you know what? At this point, at this point, 2024, I'm going to say this, and, and, and I don't know if you guys agree or disagree. 2024, right? What are we doing, man? We're on the internet. We're on Instagram. We're doing all these things. You know, I, I say for the masses, right? I say we're entertaining the masses, right? That's just me. That's just me. We're entertaining the masses. Now, my thing is... Can we get carried away? Yes. Can we say things that we probably can't take back? Of course. Why? Because it lives in the internet. Once you say it, it's out in the open. It's out, unless you have it uh, where, I don't know, let's see, it's uh, members only or something like that, where it's private or whatever. But for the most part, somebody is always going to screen record this. Somebody is always going to, you know, or, or just, or just uh, uh, you know, shoot it to somebody else that can do it or whatever. You know what I mean? Somebody will always get a clip of that thing that you said, and it's it's going to be in the Internet forever, right? So that's the thing with that, right? Now, can we be a little more careful of what we talk about? Of course. Are we going to be careful? Of, no, we're not going to be careful. We will not be careful on what we say. Why? Because we want to talk our sh right? We want to say what we want to say, man. And that's it. Unfortunately... Unfor unfortunate and unfortunate, right? There's two. There's fortunate, fortunate for the viewers because the viewers are the ones that are getting all this, and they're like, Fuck "Yeah, let's go!" <laughs> Shots fired. Shots fired. Get it? And then unfortunate for the people that are talking about it because sometimes they regret it the following day. They're like, "Damn, did I really just say that?" Hey, it is what it is, right? So that's what happened with Lush. You know, th thankfully, you know, they, they uh, settled the differences. And now let's see what happens after that. I don't know what's going to happen after that, right? So uh, let me, uh, so you know Fat Joe, right? Fat Joe is um, an old school, uh, old school hip hop head, right? He recently went, well, I don't know how recent, but he went to a, a shoe convention and he didn't want to give a little kid an interview, and he said a couple of things. Let's hear what he had to say. To the kid at SneakerCon. He came to ask me some... I want to say sorry to the kid at SneakerCon. He came to ask me some questions. I was like, yo, I got sneakers older than you. I just felt bad. I got sneakers older than you. Older than you. Don't play with me, boy. And I rarely take talk back. But if you see this video where the kid was trying to interview me and I start talking about the Louis Vuitton, that was wrong. I don't know what kind of arrogant shit I was on. And Shorty was too young. I was talking shit, but he's too young to, to understand that. He just wanted an interview and he didn't. I want to say sorry. There you go. There you go right there. So Fat Joe went to a sneaker con and a little kid. I think I've seen that little kid a lot, right? I think he has it on YouTube channel or Instagram chat, whatever. He actually interviews a lot of people, and he happened to see Fat Joe over there. And then he said, hey, man, what's up with these sneakers? And he was like, man, I got sneakers older than you. Now, the thing is, when a person like Fat Joe is doing things like that, you know, to a little kid, right? A little kid, the little kid is like, he's looking at him like, bro, like, what's your problem, man? I'm just here trying to get some, some footage, so, some content for my viewers. And here you are talking shit, right? It is what it is, right? Good thing Fat Joe actually made this video. I'm waiting to see if that little kid actually gets a hold of this video and maybe they'll do a little collab or a little small interview, you know, because, you know, for somebody to recognize the mistakes that they do, even if it's after the fact, especially uh, a big person like him and i don't mean like fat because he's not fat no more he's skinny a person like him and you know that admits to being wrong hey more power to you and i'm glad you did that i'm glad you did that right because think about it how many people how many people do not admit that they're wrong 
A lot of people will never admit that they're wrong. A lot of people would be like, hey, I said what I said. It is what it is. Move forward, right? Hey, that's crazy, man. So let's see. Um, this is another interesting thing right here. This is, and I don't like this man right here. I don't like this man for, right? This is Dr. Uman, Umar or something like that. But he says, this is the title. This man explains why emotionally damaged people are sexually promiscuous. All right, let's hear what he had to say. People are always. Hold on, hold on, hold on. If you are emotional, emotionally damaged people are always sexually promiscuous. Let me say this again. Hmm. If you are traumatized, if you are emotionally damaged, you are promiscuous. And do you want to know why? Dang. Why is that? Emotionally traumatized people require constant validation from others. Mm. You married to a woman who's been traumatized, abuse, abandonment, whatever. When you're not around her for too many days, she has to entertain another man because her trauma dictates constant validation and constant validation means I must have a man in my personal space. This is, you ever date a woman who was crazy about you? She absolutely loved you. So you thought it was really addiction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When, when you finally let her go, when you finally got her to stop stalking you, she ended up with another man like that. Mm, and your ego yes. took a hit. You said, wait a minute. I know that woman was crazy about me. Crammed in my window. Emotionally damaged people. So let me ask the masses, right? What do you think about that? And, and it goes for, maybe it goes for both. I don't know. But this is basically, he's talking about a woman, right? So a woman... And, you know, a lot of women, and, and shout out to all the ladies out there that watch the channel. Jessica, what's up, what's up, how you doing? Um, so the thing is, a lot of women, and I see this because I see this in the hospital. A lot of women at the hospital are actually emotional people. They want to be validated so much. I actually had this discussion this morning when I went to work. Because there's, uh, there's two girls that are uh, working graveyard at my department, right? So I had this discussion in the morning, and we talked about this because one of them, um, one of them is uh, kind of, I guess she's single right now, right? One of them is single, and we were asking her, man, how, how is it in the, in, the, um, in the social media world, right? How do you deal with it? And you know what she said? She has no social media. But I was like, okay, cool. That's, that's dope. You don't have social media? You don't have to deal with that. But she said her friends are actually... Uh, social media addicts, right? And they take selfies and do this and that, the other, right? And they want the likes, they want the shares, they want the the replies, they want the um, the comments. Without those comments, if they don't get a certain amount of likes, comments, or shares, they go crazy. So they start taking more pictures, you know, showing more cleavage, showing their butt, showing their legs, you know, because a lot of these women. And I'm only speaking about women because I don't care about the guys, right? Obviously, right? So a lot of these women are taking these selfies in order to get these likes. They want what they want, man. And that's how they feed their ego as well. That is crazy, man. That's crazy that they feed their ego like that, man. But you know what? That's the thing. I don't know if they have problems when they were kids. I don't know. But, you know, women actually... Um, I'm just talking about women. Like I said, women actually have a lot of self, low self-esteem. A lot of women, even beautiful women, man. I used to work with this Heina, and uh, she was very pretty, man. Very pretty. She was packing heat up here, packing heat down there, packing heat on her legs. You know what I mean? She was very beautiful. She was cool, man. Her name, I can't say her name. Never mind. I was about to say her name. But anyways, she was pretty, very pretty, uh, and very, very cool, a very cool person. I don't know how many of you guys actually met women that were very beautiful and very cool at the same time. That's like, man, a dime a dozen, right? So anyways, this this girl, this Heine, um, she would be like, I don't know why women, I mean, I don't know why men do not approach me. You know what I said? And I'm going to tell you what I said. I said because they're intimidated by you. They are intimidated by your looks, right? And a lot of women are pretty smart and and you know they have everything going for them they work they have everything one thing that i do gotta mention this heiner had i think two kids this heiner had two kids 
A lot of the times, men do not want to deal with women that have kids. Why? Because that's a problem. You're not going to be able to um, discipline the kids, right? If you're a man, you can't discipline the kids because that's not your kid. And the woman's going to be like, hey, you can't discipline my kid, right? I think I have a video of that as well. But um, so hold on. Let me see. So anyways, what I'm trying to say is that this Heine at work, she was very beautiful, but she was actually intimidating for men. Men would not men would not want to be with her because one, she was very beautiful and they were like, oh, I can't approach her. I'm too I'm too ugly for her. But, you know, <laughs> it sounds like Norby's. <laughs> oh, wait up. There it is. <laughs> and here's a perfect example of that, right? This video says, women say you cannot discipline my kids. You are not their father. You are their stepdad. So here's what this is, has to say. Wow. So, so you heard that? I, it was in Spanish. For anybody that didn't understand. This man said, you know what, your kid, the woman said, how can you discipline my kids? The man said, you know what, I'm tired of this. You know, I'm not able to discipline the kids. You're over here uh, uh, letting them run amok. They broke a, like, uh, I guess, uh, maybe $200 table or whatever, a glass table, and you're not saying shit, you know what I mean? So it, it, it is messed up. It is messed up, man, because somebody that's going into a relationship with a woman that have excuse me i'm sorry that has kids you gotta remember you're not gonna be able to discipline them right you're not gonna be able to discipline them telly savannah says locked out tv got stanked striked out Ooh, i know the feeling i know the feeling i've been there i've been in a chopping block i've been on the chopping block um it's not a good feeling man it's not a good feeling man you know um I know he started another channel, unfortunately, or fortunate, whatever, you know. Um, if this channel, if this channel that is uh, his main channel gets uh, deleted and gets erased, he's not going to have the same success. Maybe, maybe not. He might, he might not have the same success. Because, you know, even though you have all these subscribers, even though you have, you know, 16,000 subscribers, all those 16,000 subscribers... Are not gonna follow you on your next channel. They're just not. You know, they're gonna be maybe, I don't know, like one percent of that is gonna go over there. One percent of that is gonna go over there. And you know, it's it's unfortunately, but whatever, man. That's the risk. That, and I'm gonna tell you guys, that's the risk that we take when we do these reactions, right? That's the risk we take when we do these reactions, man. You know, we unfortunately do take content from other people and then we use it for ourselves. But here's the thing. Respectfully, well, I'll, I'll talk about, remind me, remind me, who said that? Who said that? Telly Savalas. Remind me, or Telly Savalas. Remind me before I end the show, and we'll talk about that. Right now, we're going to get into another one. This is actually the No Lanes podcast with Droops. No, other than girl. Droops. He's always been there. Yeah. Um, he's always, he's never hated. You know what I'm saying? And hold, that, on, hold on, hold on. I think it's at 14 minutes. All right. 14 minutes. He addresses the, he addresses the uh, hood stocks thing. And then we're going to get into that. All right. Hold, here we go. You know, like we, we don't do that. Like I heard a lot of your interview, your, your interview, just you talking before the podcast. Like we're like, God damn. So good. And your stories are, you paint the picture. Good. I, I know you, you post something like, are you coming on your own podcast, my boy? Well, um, yeah, well, I mean, like for real, for real, a lot of this shit's unexpected, dog. Like, you like you 
Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. I got. I got to rewind that real quick. Let me rewind that. I think it's a little bit earlier than that. But okay. So this is where we're getting that. We're getting with uh, 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 Droops and and Casey. All right. Be at can do can you be late to weddings? Because I've never. I, that's probably my. Whatever. But fuck. I had a go coming out, so we're pretending vibe, good energy. It was it was cool. I mean, Droops didn't show up. I told him to go to the party. Uh, he didn't show up. That's cool, dog. Whatever. But it was. Like, I, had a, I had a man. It like. You guys know when I invite people, I don't even want to invite some good energy, some good homies. I don't care who you are. Like, if you, if, if I fuck with you and you're in a positive, like, you know, about the negative bullshit, like, don't bring it to my wedding, dog. Like, don't yeah. bring, like, straight up, like, don't bring it coming to your yeah. food. Like, it's, <laughs> who the fuck is that, fool? <laughs> yeah, like. He's the taco guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, dog. Oh, it's no. like, there we go. You were walking. I, I know you, you post something like, are you coming on your own podcast, my boy? Well, um, yeah, well, I mean, like for real, for real, a lot of the shit's unexpected, dog. Like, you like you like podcasts though. It's cool as fuck. Yeah. Like, you know, I um you know the homie Lucky put me on and shit on Hoodstocks. Hoodstocks. Uh, yep. Yep. Salute. Shout out. Let's go. You know, but uh yeah, he put me on that shit and like in the beginning, I was like more like, hey, it's just like let me chill in the corner type shit. Like I'm just here, but um, as time went on and you see like the different stuff and uh, meeting different people and just you know interaction with um, just different people that you don't even know on in the IG and shit. It's cool shit. It's cool, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I've been I've been pretty cool with it. So Hoodstocks is a, a done deal for you right now. Well, um, look, lucky, um. Lucky kind of just uh, said he was moving in a different direction, dog. So, you know, we just got to respect that. Yeah. You know? yeah. No. Hell yeah. You know? It's... We done that, too, because we used to have a um, podcast, Street Scholars, and I felt like, with all due respect to, like, all the... And so, see, that's the thing. The thing is, and, and I think that's why, I think that's why I don't have a team with me. I think that's why I'm by myself, like Lush said, solo, dolo. Um, it's, it's hard to have a team, right? It's hard to have a team because you do have differences of opinions. You know, you're talking about, oh man, maybe we should do it this way. Maybe we should do it that way. We should discuss this. We should discuss that. But at the end of the day, the person that actually started the show is the leader, right? That's the main head, unfortunately. So you have to listen to that person. It's like me. It's like me going to, um, you know, American Cholo and, and telling American Cholo, hey, from this day forward, this is how we're going to run it, right? What is what is, what is uh, Gil going to say? Who the hell are you? you the, you're just an employee of the American Cholo. I'm paying you this amount of money, you know, once a month, you know, and, and who, you have no say-so, right? That's what Gil's going to tell me. He's going to be like, look, you're already getting your paycheck. You're already getting uh, uh, whatever you get off of this podcast. You have no say so, you know, and 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 that's the honest truth, right? And 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 uh, as far as Tony A. the Wizard, as far as Tony A. the Wizard, uh, we're still negotiating. We're still negotiating with our contract because I don't know if I'm gonna be going there once a month as well. I don't know how that's gonna work out. You know, I do have to reach out to Tony A. Shout out to Tony A. Um, I don't know if you're listening, Tony. Uh, we do have to speak business, so. I don't know how that contract is going to work out with me as well because if I'm going to go there once a month, then then we have to speak numbers, right? We have to. Anyways, what I'm saying is, I'm not going to go to Tony A's and be like, "All right, uh, rhodium after dark." No, no, we we we're going to have to start at 9 p.m. or we're going to have to go for three hours. We're going to have to go for an hour. You know what I mean? It doesn't work that way because you are not the main person, right? So. When Hoodstocks decided to go a different direction, he just has to accept it. Other calls that we had on the show. Yeah. But I like for me, and I'm not saying your case, but like yeah. for me, Jimmy, we feel like we're putting all this work in, all these things, and it felt like for and, and, and um, as far as our situation, yeah, we had it in all the calls. There, there are our friends, and we just had to part ways, and we started no lanes, whatever. But we're still cool with all of them. You know, I'm pretty sure there was some kind of resentment. Well, for yeah. some part, but that's the only thing about in a pocket is a business. That's a thing, business with France. It could be, you know, but I'm glad you guys are still on good terms and yeah, all that. That's for dope, me, bro. I mean, it was never like no business stuff or anything like that, you know? Like, I mean, yeah. 
we used to just pull up, show the homie love, you know, and uh, and that's the thing. And I and I appreciate that one thousand percent. I appreciate that one thousand percent. If they're going up there and pulling up just on the strength, as they call it, I'm going over there on the strength, and they're doing it just to you know have Lucky's back, then that's cool. Hey, that's by all means, that's fine. But sometimes you gotta say something, right? You gotta be like, hey, you know what? I'm your show's popping. I'm here. I'm making it pop. People like my my vibes, you know. And that's when you start negotiating with people, right? That's when you start saying, you know what? Um, from now on, I think we should negotiate a contract, right? Because, like, uh, who said that? Who said that? Chicano Express. Time is money, right? And nothing is for free. Nothing is for free, man. You know, even though I do have a good time all going out to Rodeo Radio, and I do have a good time going to American Cholo. I do believe that uh, you you need to get compensated for what you do. That's just me. I don't know. That's just me. You could be a friend. You could be a loyal uh, uh, person. But at the same time, in my opinion, I need to get paid. I need to. I got bills to pay. I got gas to put in my car. You know what I mean? Things got to change, man. Thing, you, and, and a lot of people, I, I'm, I'm just saying this because a lot of people... Don't speak up, man. I, myself, West Coast Graffiti, the man that you're seeing right here, right now, always speaks up, man. I don't keep my mouth shut, you know? And so it is what it is, man. Let's see Let's see if uh, Tony comes out with a good contract for me, and then we'll move forward from there, man. And if he doesn't, then it is what it is, you know? We'll just have to, uh, we'll have to part ways, you know? But um, if he does come out with a good contract, something that I, uh, I like, then we'll talk numbers, right? Because... Obviously, my contract, it's like a lease, right? I'm like i am like an apartment or a condo, right? You know, you're going to have to fucking lease me for at least six months. No lower than six months, man. If I'm going to go somewhere, it's going to be for at least six months. I need to get paid regardless, right? So anyways, let's move Let's move on. Let's, let, well, not move on. Let's see what else he has to say. He said he was trying to go in a different direction, so that's cool. That's you cool. Know? Yeah, that's cool. So I don't know. Hey, if, if Rocky hit me up and was like, "Hey, bro," or if, say I told Rocky, "Hey, fool, I think I'm gonna go in a different direction." Yeah, Rocky's yeah, gonna I mean, be mad. He's gonna be like, "Fuck you, dog." Yeah, for sure. 100 percent, right? Yeah. But I mean, you you're, guys, you're playing the bigger part right now, and no, I, I love that. No, the thing is, is like maybe like, you guys started this shit together, and you guys that was your intention. Like, I never went over there with the intention of being on camera or, uh, like, looking for any kind of part in the yeah. podcast. None like, the shit. part kind of fell yeah. into your lap, at, in a it, sense, yeah, you know? Like, it wasn't like, planned out. It wasn't yeah. this business venture. You weren't just, in it for the black chicks. Yeah. 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 yeah, like, I just pulled up, like, showing love to the homie and shit, just... Uh, pulling up to support, yeah. and little yeah. by little... Uh, it got bigger. Like, it got, I worked worked in there That's type cool. shit you know so that was never the intention so you know when uh he wants to do his own thing that's cool you yeah. know support yeah. Yeah. That's That's good. Good. and shout out i i've been on hoodstocks yeah uh, shout out to like you i just went on too right yeah. All right, so that's pretty much it. Then they're going to talk about you, each other, and they're going to, you know, make them each other look good or whatever. But that's all I'm saying, man. And then also, uh, anyways, I did hear on, on Hoodstocks, and I can't remember what, what video it was, but I did hear that Lucky actually said Casey and Droops will be starting their own podcast, and if they want, they can use his studio for the podcast. Obviously, if I'm going to use... You know, a uh, uh, studio. I'm gonna have to change the backdrop. That's number one. I'm gonna have to change the backdrop. I'm gonna have to do what I have to do to make my studio look legit. Now, if I was them, and and shout out to Droops and, and Casey, if they are gonna start their own podcast, this is a piece of advice from West Coast Graffiti. I don't know if you guys want to shoot this little clip for them. Clip this, shoot it to them. Let them know what I said. Droops. And Casey, if you do happen to start your own show, your own podcast, get a green screen. Get a green screen. That way you guys could have your own image back there. If, if, if in fact, you are going to use that studio, if, in fact, you are going to use that studio because you don't want to have the same setting that Lucky has, right? You need to have your own green screen or your own backdrop, something that's going to pop, you know, something that's going to make your channel pop right so that's all i'm saying so shout out to casey shout out to droops if in fact they are going to do that and one thing i also gotta add 
when you start going to a podcast, and this isn't, it's not for everybody. This is not exactly for everybody. But when you start going to a podcast and you become a regular, you know, if you're not your own podcast show or your own show, like me, myself, I'm, a, I'm my own show. You know, I just go over there and kick it with them and shoot the shit, get drunk and do whatever I do, right? I'm not that entertaining. Like I said, um, somebody asked me on Hater World's uh, show, they were like, hey, West Coast, why don't you come to Hater World's 200 Boys? I'm not that entertaining, guys. I am not that entertaining. Like somebody said, man, I'm a Section A uh, apartment at, at best, right? I'm a Section A apartment at best, man. I'm not that entertaining. I just like to talk shit, and I like to drink beer. So if you have beer and you want me to go talk my shit, I'll go over there, man. I will go over there. I will pull up, and I'll just drink and talk shit. That's, that's all I'm good for, man, because at the end of the day, man... People just want to be entertained. I don't give a fuck what you do, right? I don't care who you are. If I'm having a good time and I'm drinking and I'm talking my shit and you guys are having a good time, then I did my job. That is my job. My job is to, to entertain the masses. Well, anyways, back to Casey and uh, Droops. Hopefully, they have a successful podcast. Hopefully, they have uh, everything that they need to do the right way. And it is what it is, right? So, okay. So, now let's go back to... Ryan Garcia, right? You guys heard about Ryan Garcia. Ryan Garcia had something that happened to him. Let me look up a little clip that I saw. I, hopefully, it's not. Um, hopefully, it's not too long. But I did see a clip. I think I put it on my on my save list. Let's see. Hold on, hold on. Ryan Garcia. Okay, hold on. So this is uh, Ryan Garcia. This is somebody speaking about Ryan Garcia. Hold on. Let's see what he says. Okay, so that's um, Henry Garcia's um, Instagram, all right? That's his Instagram. So it looks like Ryan Garcia is okay, that, and he was just trolling. I, I, I'm going to say this. Before um, I give my take on the type of trolling or, or everything, I just, I just wanted to know my boy was okay. I mean, I, was, I hit him up. He didn't respond. I was hitting everybody up, bro. Um, and it seems like it, it seems like for now that I mean he's at least not what that um that tweet was saying. Okay, so he's at least um okay. All right. So shit, I gotta lay down, bro. I'm, I'm I mean that was everybody was concerned and everybody was worried. And I'm not gonna make this video long. I just wanted to tell um all of you uh Ryan Garcia fans, boxing fans, or just people who give a shit. Um Seems like he's okay, man. That's that because you know that's my boy, so I, I gotta lay down. Ryan, hit me up, bro. Hit me up, bro. Just all right. So, what he's talking about is obviously what happened. Ryan Garcia's IG page supposedly got hacked, right? Supposedly we got hacked. And the thing is, you know, when we see these Instagram posts, what are we to think, man? They have a video, somebody running around the house talking about oh, Ryan Garcia's deleted. 6666 or whatever it is. I don't know. The pentagram, this, that, and the other. You know, sacrificial, all that, man. You start thinking like, oh, snap. Right after he was talking about Divine Haney. He was talking shit about Divine Haney or whatever his name is. Oh, my God. This is and then he called up Paul. Paul, one of the one of the um, Logan brothers, right? He's like, oh, man, I'll get with you, Paul, as well, man. I'm getting everybody. I'm taking everybody down. So that's the thing, man. We start thinking about it, man. Is this does this really happen? Shout out to Baby Love. Baby Love actually made a video saying that this guy got deleted, man. I don't know, right? We're all concerned, man. Once we open our phones in the morning, we're like, oh my God, did this really happen? Did this really happen? But no, all he wanted was what? Give me some chon chon. Give me some, give me some chon chon. All he wanted was somebody's chon chon, bro. All he wanted was somebody's chon chon. Right? So, then we move forward, right? We move forward. A few hours later, this is what comes out. Hey, Ryan. Uh, I'm coming on here to explain what's going on. I'm not in possession of my phone. I can't get access to my Instagram. Uh, my cards are locked. Yeah. Bro, 
personally wanted just to send out a video to the people that me that's concerned that I'm okay. I'm not dead. I believe in Jesus. All those are lies. And blocking my cards. I can't access my money. All right, so that's the video that Ryan Garcia put a few hours ago, right? Saying he's okay, everything's okay. Uh, people hacked his phone, you know, he loves Jesus, this, that, and the other. Now, my wife, I spoke to my wife, right, because I texted her right away. I'm like, hey, man, did you hear what happened? And she's like, uh, yeah, but I think something's wrong with him, right? She knows, because she follows boxing. So she knows that Ryan Garcia has actual mental issues. He actually took a year off from boxing because he has mental issues. I don't know that. I don't follow these boxing guys, man. But my wife, she likes boxing, and she follows every boxer. Not, like, all the time, but she knows what's going on in the boxing world, right? So I was like, oh, shit. So this is actually something that he's suffering from. He's suffering from some kind of uh, 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 mental breakdowns here and there. He's, uh, uh, what's it called? Um, oh, man. Uh, whatever he's suffering from some kind of mental issue right so that's the thing now when i hear what he had to say right here it kind of makes sense it kind of makes sense you know because they, if they take away his credit cards that means he can't spend money if they take away his phones that means he can't make phone calls or do any instagram posts or anything like that look i wish nothing but the best for boxers because boxers once you got once you get hit too many times in the head, what did what did um well, I'm not gonna mention what well, you know you you start losing it you start losing it. That's why a lot of boxers actually fight like who Money Mayweather. They start fighting. They they jab here and here and there. They're just trying to get the points. They're not trying to get hit, you know. So they're starting to get uh, them points right. So they start fighting smarter, not harder, right? But unfortunately, that's not the kind of fights we like to see. Now, I don't give a fuck about boxing. I'll watch it, but I don't care about boxing. And this man right here, Ryan Garcia, is actually somebody that we got to pay attention to. He needs help. How many fights is he going to fight? Now, my money is with Devane Haney, Devane Haney, whatever his name is. If, he, if Ryan Garcia actually loses to this man, he should call it quits. He should call it quits, man. That's it. All right, now now that we're done with my stuff, let me go ahead and read some of these comments. We're going to go in on all of this. All right, so Blue Tranza says, could see WCG going to Alcoholics Anonymous. You know what? I was actually um, an AA. I do have a DUI under my belt. Uh, two, circa 2003. Circa 2003. You know what sucks about the, uh, uh, Alcoholics Anonymous? Is that a lot of these people, and it doesn't suck, but I'm just saying it sucks for me because I, when I went there, a lot of these people have a lot of sad stories, man. And I've seen it, I've lived it, and, I, and I'm just like, wow. But it, if it changes you and if it makes you a better person, I suggest you go to AA meetings. I myself, I went there for, I, I want to say like 12 sessions it was, I think. And um, will I go back? No, no. It, because, you know... When you deal with demons, I think you have to deal with demons on your own. You don't have to go somewhere. I say that with uh, psychiatrists and everything. If you have to deal with something, deal with it on your own. I don't think you need to pay anybody. But, yeah, it's crazy. Okay, there we go. Don't forget to talk about my strikes. All right, let's go ahead and talk about my strikes, Joe Bob. All right, so in my YouTube Yarda career, for the last three years, I've had three strikes, three separate strikes, right? One of them was, um, I don't know if you guys remember when, um, I don't know if it, it wasn't Chris Rock. It was another comedian uh, that uh, he almost got hit on stage at the Hollywood Bowl. Or he did get hit at the Hollywood Bowl. I'm not sure if he did or he didn't. But it was uh, about two years ago. He got uh, confronted by an audience and, and they ran up stage and they almost hit him or did they hit him? I don't know if it was... Uh, Chris Chris Rock or if it was Dave Chappelle. Well, anyways, I actually took that content, right, and I posted it on my channel 
without giving the man credit, right? And they, and they, and they went, was it Dave Chappelle? Tell, tell you uh, Well, anyways, I posted on my channel and I didn't give the man credit. And I, and I, and I just, it was like a 30 second clip. And man, that 30 second clip made, uh, it gave me like, I don't know, like 30 subscribers and they ran my numbers up, right? And I was like, oh, hell yeah, that's what's up, man. And I was just like tripping. I was like, damn. So anyways, it gave me 30 subscribers like in like two days. And it ran my numbers. It was from like, it went from like zero to like 300, right? In like two days, a 30 second, maybe 400. I don't know how many. When it was by the third day, boom, I got an email from, uh, from, from the YouTube Yarda saying, hey, homie, somebody put a pegada on you. Somebody put a pegada on you. They got your fucking ticket, homie. And I was like, who the fuck did that? So I opened up my email, and it was the owner of the video, right? The owner of the video had emailed me or had, um, you know, put the pegada on me, and they sent somebody the kite, and, and the kite actually got somebody, and, they, and they, they, they got me, right? So at that point, I was like, I em and I emailed the guy right away. I was like, hey, man, is there any way you can um, take, this, take this strike away or whatever? And he never replied. He never replied because in the email that he sent me, he said, if you would have just gave me credit, I would have not given you that strike. I took it like a champ. You know, I took it like a champ. I went to medical. I was bleeding out. You know what I mean? I was in the infirmary for infirmary for like, I don't know. Uh, it must have been like three months or whatever. I think it's like 90 days or whatever. I was in there bleeding now. They patched me up, and I was good, right? I was like, all right, cool. I'm good. Boom. Strike is gone. Next thing you know, next thing you know, not even a week later, boom, I get another pegada and another pegada. I got two pegadas within a week, right? The second pegada, the second pegada was crazy because I was like, where did this come from, right? I had a made a reaction video, I want to say like three years ago, right? Three years ago, 2019, 2020, something like that. And then um, YouTube had hit me. Well, you know, the YouTube Yarda had hit me with a pegada talking about, oh, you're cyberbullying, right? And I was like, wait a minute. Who? What? When? Well, what happened is somebody that was on my channel was talking to Masa about somebody else. And next thing you know, they were like, hey, you're talking about um, cyberbullying. Boom, another pegada. So I was like, oh, man, they just reopened the wound. I was like, ah, shit. So I was like, all right, cool, man. All right, cool, whatever. I, I'll, I'll take that. I'll take that pegada. They patched me up. And then, boom, they hit me on the other side. And I was like, oh, shit, man. I'm bleeding out, man. Help me out. Help me out. Come on, man. Help me out. I'm sitting in the lifeline. Please help me out. They gave me another pegada, right? YouTube Yarda gave me another pegada. But the other pegada was, um, <laughs> and I'm going to say his name. I'm going to say his name. Marvelous, right? It was for Marvelous. Shout out to Marvelous. Marvelous was on my channel, I want to say 2020, right? And he was talking about the jab, right? He was talking about the jab, and, and then he was talking about so many things about the jab or whatever, this, that, and the other. And YouTube was like, hey, you can't talk about the medical misinformation or whatever, you know, this is all, you know, he said, she said, or she said, or whatever. So YouTube sent me another pic, and I was like, bleeding out from both sides. I was like, oh, shit, man, I fucking died over here. Give me a lifeline. You know, I'm going into cardiac arrest. <laughs> I was dying, guys. I was dying, and I was like, oh, shit, hold on, hold on. This is when I got to be careful, right? I was like, oh, no. I got to be careful, man. I only have, I think at that time I had like 7,000 subscribers. I was like, oh, I can't lose 7,000 subscribers. No, 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 no. So what did I do? I ended up deleting all the videos. I took down all the videos, man. I went into my YouTube uh, uh, page and I started deleting, delete, 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 delete. Why? Because I said, you know what? If YouTube got me, if YouTube got me, for that, then they can get me for other things, right? So I was tripping, man. I was tripping about those two pegadas from the YouTube Yarda. So if you guys know me, I deleted everything, man. Everything. And not just deleted. I actually backed it up. I put it on my hard drive. And I said to myself, I'm going to go through all my videos and I'm going to upload them for the members, right? I'm going to upload them for the members. 
I don't have a lot of members, and that's fine. But I'm going to upload my videos, f- the most entertaining ones at least, for the members, right? So those are my two pe- my three pegadas right there. Three pegadas. Was I scared? Yes. Is Clown Load scared? Yes. We work hard to do this for you guys. We work hard for, to do this for you guys. Um, I don't agree with a lot of things that, that happen on YouTube. I just don't. Uh, is there a way to resolve the issues? Yes, there is. Do we want to resolve our issues? No, we don't. Unfortunately, um, the way I see things is um, sometimes it's open game. It's it's uh, open for everybody, and sometimes it's not. You know. Do you guys think? Do you guys think I deserve those two pegadas? Anyways, <clears throat> that's pretty much it for me. It's going to be 6 o'clock. I have uh, some chicken. I have some chicken ready to... It's marinated already. I'm going to put it on the thing that my brother bought me, or gave me, actually. I'm going to bake them. I'm going to do mac and cheese for dinner. Mac and cheese. And I'm also going to do... Um, Mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes in the box. I'm sorry. I don't have time to, you know, uh, uh, boil the potatoes and, and peel them and do all that. No, I went to go buy the box mashed potatoes. So I'm going to do that with some milk, water. It is what it is. I'm sorry. I'm lazy. All right. Plus, I'm drinking. Tomorrow's my day off. And you know what? I have to go to the goddamn dentist tomorrow in the morning. So they're going to have to fucking smell my alcoholic breath. It is what it is. With that being said, it's your boy West Coast Graffiti. I hope you enjoyed this um, <laughs> this live, and uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow at five. Live at five, all right? Uh, thank you guys for tapping in, man. No phone calls tonight. Maybe a phone call during the week. I'm not sure. All right. Peace.